Okay, well, I'm going to just give a quick introduction, but Roger, I'll let you introduce yourself mainly. But um, Roger, you may know Roger as one of the uh, one of the evangelists for, for Samsung Bixby. This is not what his presentation is about today. Uh, we have Roger here really talk about voice assistance, mental health, and pandemics. And Roger and I had been chatting recently, actually been working together on the coronavirus doc uh, skill from Voice First Health. And um, anyway, it's uh, as we know what happened to that one due to uh, the platform uh, issues. But uh, I'm really pleased to have Roger here to talk about um, some of these impacts from the pandemic in terms of the mental health and how we can be using the voice technology to help us with that. So with that, Roger, I'm going to jump off and I'm going to let you take the stage here. Great. Well, thanks, Terry. Yeah, you know, I really like to think about this is, uh, I think a better uh, title for my talk would have been using voice assistance to help maintain our mental and physical health in these very, very challenging uh, times. Uh, next slide, Terry. Uh, who am I? Really briefly, uh, Terry mentioned I'm a developer evangelist for Viv Labs, division of Samsung behind Bixby. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Roger Kibbe. Uh, just personally, Two teen daughters. I live and was raised in the San Francisco Bay Area, UC Berkeley graduate. And actually, I have a degree in psychology, but I work in tech. So, hence uh, my interest in mental health uh, goes back to what my degree is back in school. Although I work day to day talking about Bixby, this is all about um, I'm going to talk a lot about Alexa. I'm going to talk about uh, Google Assistant. I'm going to talk about Bixby. This is for the world of voice assistants, this presentation. Okay, so next slide. So what's happening? So really two major things. We're all aware of the traumatic event of coronavirus COVID-19 uh, and its impacts upon the world. Uh, and in order to mitigate this and to flatten the curve, we're all asked to be social distancing. And really that's leading to social isolation for us. So two major things that are happening. And if you can go to the next slide, from a mental health perspective, when you think of when a, there's a traumatic event, there's several uh, issues that arrive. Uh, people get stressed, uh, health issues arise, there's a feeling of helplessness, a feeling of panic, uh, substance abuse arise, arises, uh, post-traumatic stress sy syndrome is a problem. And if you go to the next slide. Uh, and then social isolation has its own mental health issues as well. Loneliness, depression, health issues, anxiety, substance abuse, and next. So scientific term, no, I'm kidding, the layman term, we really have a kind of a double whammy from a mental health perspective going on. We have this horrible disease rampaging globally, and the, you know, the way to mitigate it is to obviously isolate ourselves, but in isolating ourselves, we also increase some of the challenges from a mental health perspective. And I just have a bunch of headlines from uh, you know, major news art outlets there uh, that you know, this is not unknown. People are starting to talk about this and be concerned around this. Okay, next slide. So the question I wanted to go out and answer is how can you use your voice assistant that you have in your home or on your phone today to help with this? And I have a bunch of areas where I think voice assistants could really help with some of these mental health challenges that are arising because of COVID-19 and because of the social isolation that we're all feeling. So next slide. Uh, first of all, maintaining connection. You know, I really liked what Terry said. Uh, what was it? Social, uh, um, we're physically distancing and socially connecting. I thought that was fabulous and a great way to doing it. And so I think about how can we socially connect? Well, all voice assistants allow you to make phone calls. And why I think that's important is I think your voice assistant, uh, your smart speaker is a far, far better uh, conference call tool than your phone, for instance. So I'd encourage people to use that. But even more exciting and interesting to me is using video calling. So I've been on a bunch of these Zoom-based virtual happy hours and it seems my life sits on Zoom uh, most of my work week uh, now. But, you know, I'm not going to ask my mother-in-law to uh, learn how to use Zoom. On the other hand, if she had a Google device uh, with a screen, it'd be as simple as saying, Alexa, call my mother-in-law's name. And then we could chat and it could be a video conference and we could all share that. Likewise, Google has the same way. Hey, Google, video call. 
you have to set up duo there but i encourage people and i think it's a great way to stay connected is via these video calls and video conferencing and i think the very best and easiest way to do that in a non-professional setting is quite frankly our voice assistants with screens because they built have it built in and they made it so so very very easy to stay connected and that's so critically important when we can't go out and interact the way we normally do with people on a day-to-day -day basis uh, stay connected, stay connected with friends and loved ones, uh, and use video calls to do that. Okay, next slide. Okay, exercise. So I think we all know that exercise is so important for us. And I will frankly say I've been uh, cooped up working from home now going, is it two or three weeks? Uh, and I'm not getting the exercise that I need. And I think many of us aren't when we're sitting here working from home. And we also know that exercise is really critical to our mental health. So if you look at the voice assistants, there's several experiences that can be used to really help and enhance us and get us out and exercising. I just highlight some ones that I've used or I've tried out here. There's many, many more. Uh, seven minute workout, fabulous thing that's on Alexa, five minute plank on Google. There's many more for adults. Uh, if you're a senior, so there's some workouts designed specifically for seniors, a senior squat, workout on Alexa, senior workout on Bixby. Um, if you have kids, uh, freeze dance is available on both Alexa and Bixby. You know, the kids jump around and dance and the music stops and they need to freeze. Uh, anything you can do to keep your kids busy right now is an advantage and this lets them exercise as well, as well as a really cute thing in Alexa called animal workout that lets kids uh, go and do these fun exercises and pretend they're animals. Um, I actually did it myself and got a laugh out of doing it. All right, next slide. Uh, meditation and relaxation. So I don't know about you, but I get pretty stressed if I go and I, I, I'm constantly hitting CNN and look at these headlines. Uh, and I looked at my 401k today and uh, boy, that was a little depressing. But I mean, I think the point being is that I mean, finding ways to relax in these really stressful times is super important. And using tools like meditation is an incredibly powerful way to do that. And the nice thing is that our voice assistants have the ability to teach you how to meditate or give you guided meditation lessons. So Headspace available on Google and Alexa, really, really well known in that space, really super well done. On Bixby, there's a meditation guided uh, capsule called Mind Bliss. Uh, on Google, just on Google, Calm, another big, big player in this kind of meditation and mindfulness uh, area, has a presence there, nicely done. And then I point out guided meditation on Alexa. There's many, many more of these, but I think these are super powerful in a great way when, you know, you've gone and looked at that uh, 401k balance or you've read too many negative articles about what's going on to bring some mindfulness and some grounding to yourself and just take a few minutes. Many of these are just a few minutes long to go and, and find some inner peace because that's so, so important uh, with what's going on right now. Okay, next slide, Terry. Sleeping better. Okay, all those symptoms or most of mine talked about can really interrupt your sleep and cause challenges with sleep. Adjust that. Uh, whoops, you jumped ahead. Can you jump back? Sorry, that's great. Um, so there are a bunch of ambient sound uh, skills, capsules, actions that are available to help you sleep. Probably the most well-known are Nick Schwab sleep sounds uh, across all the platforms that are available. They're super well done. Um, Healing.fm does rainforest sound, a tropical forest to play, or a uh, tropical forest and a bunch of other sounds. Voice apps use ocean sound. So if you feel or if you used ambient sound machines or those skills before and that helps you sleep, then I think this is a great way to help you sleep and calm down and relax. Better sleep is better physical and mental shape for all of us. All right, jump forward now. All right, family games. So I don't know how many of you have families. Uh, I have two teenage daughters, as I mentioned. 
uh, and they are uh, going a little stir crazy right now. And so the question has been, well, what can we all do as a family? And we've been pretty creative because, you know, there's, we're kind of isolated to our house in the area. And so I'd, I'd say we played more board games in the last week than we probably have in the last uh, year. Um, but I think there's also some voice experiences which are really great for uh, families to play. And these are multiplayer games that allow a whole family to sit down and have fun. And one of the things, this highlights one of the things that I think is really unique about voice. So if I play a game on my mobile phone, um, it's just a one-on-one -on -one experience, me and that phone. Or maybe if I go in front of the Xbox, maybe a couple players can do it. But voice is inherently a social medium. And so games on voice are inherently social. So games like Word Tennis on Alexa, I learned about that a, a week or two ago, uh, uh, talking to Larna Shea on a podcast I host. Uh, fabulous, really lots of fun. Song Quiz by Volley. Um, everyone of all ages can enjoy that. Um, would You Rather uh, or Would You Rather for Families. Really, really well done. Um, simple stuff. We've all been playing that or most of us since we're childhood. It really is a fun thing to play with the family and really brings up some great conversation topics uh, to do. Something you can play actually around the dinner table. And then finally, uh, Trivial Pursuit on Alexa. I always a big fan of Trivial Pursuit. Fun to do it via a voice assistant. So that's something that I really enjoy and I think that a whole family can enjoy playing Trivial Pursuit. Okay, learning. All right, uh, so, you know, I have found myself and I many others and talking to people, we have a lot more time on our hands and we don't necessarily knew, know what to do with all this extra time being largely confined to our homes. So I think there's a great opportunity for us to embrace learning and education, learning new skills and fun things to help avoid boredom, to help really, you know, you get a real sense of accomplishment when you learn something and that certainly helps our mental health. So you can use Bixby to learn about uh, playing the guitar. Um, I love a skill called Make Me Smart, which does a daily update and tells you some interesting facts and information that's on Alexa. Um, I just discovered called Learn Something Radio, which is actually a curated set of podcasts. So they go out and find podcasts about interesting uh, topics, and then you can go listen to the podcast and skip between them. Not only a great way to learn about uh, new things, but I've discovered several new podcasts that I didn't know existed through that. So uh, I encourage you to go check that out. And then finally, you know, uh, learning a language, uh, I think is always something that's fun and practical. You know, I'll tell you my, my own family, we've been talking about, hey, we should all learn Spanish. Then when this is all over, we can take the kind of trip of a lifetime down to South America. Um, and what's beautiful about all the voice assistants is they have translation capabilities built into them. So, you know, hi Bixby, how do you say chair in Spanish? Alexa, how do you say table in French, et cetera? Great way when you're learning a language and you that that you know that words just at the tip of your tongue and you're trying to figure it out, ask your voice assistant, have it help you. So this is just something else you can learn. And it's something I think it would be really good family activity to do. And the voice assistant is there as a helper and interject when you need that help there. So lots of positivity I feel about learning and a great time to take advantage of this and take advantage of the many, many voice assistant skills that are around learning. Okay, next slide. Okay, kids, when I say kids, here, I'm talking about younger kids. These aren't so uh, targeted toward teenagers. Um, I think there's a lack of teenager uh, focused uh, voice experiences. So if you're out there building voice experiences, uh, that is an untapped market in my opinion. But anyway, back to kids, uh, learning experiences for kids and using voice assistance there. So one, two, three math, really well known, a uh, great way to learn and brush up in math as a kid. Multiply mass and multiply division on Bixby. Likewise, great way to do that. Uh, there's a really fun kids quiz on Alexa. Um, Bamboo, I'll call out that whole company. I highlight Bamboo Luminaries here. 
but that's a whole company dedicated to build learning experiences for your kids. Uh, STEM Party, which is actually built by a 13-year-old kid. Uh, I know his Twitter handle is Awesome Arif, all about uh, uh, learning about STEM. And then ending with Kids Court, I love that skill. It's uh, really Judge Lexi helps when kids have an argument and goes through this whole process and makes it entertaining and fun for them to resolve that argument. You know, I know and my kids have remote education and, that, and a lot of that's happening. I know that parents are asked to be educate there. Um, I think this is kind of sort of working from my experience and what I hear. Um, so you can augment this or keep stave away that boredom. Like I said, my two daughters are getting bored stiff and trying to figure out things to do. Well, if you can have an entertaining experience and learn something, I think that's fabulous. And it helps with the kids and their mental health too, because kids, you really need to think about that because they are not as mature as we are. And they may see the world in more of a black and white kind of fatalistic viewpoint. And, and my God, what's going to happen? I've never experienced anything like this. And neither of any of us are likely of any of us, but um, it's important to focus on your kids. Anyway, uh, next slide. Cooking. All right. So many of us uh, either very infrequently or even people never cook. And if you never cook or very infrequently do it, and all of a sudden you're being asked to cook all these meals or family meals, that is a super stressful thing. Um, even people like myself, I love to cook, but I'm being asked to cook a lot more than uh, what I'd like to. And so I think voice assistants are absolutely a great place and something to use in the kitchen to help with that. Whether you're a beginner cook and going, oh my God, I got to build this family meal. I have no idea how to do it. We always go out. Or you're even an experienced cook and need some inspiration or just an idea. Um, use these, these skills or capsules or actions, you know, Food Network, Side Chef, Google search the web for recipes, um, all recipes, big oven, tasty. There's a bunch more, but one thing that I think is common across all of them is they're just really, really useful in the kitchen, whether you are a struggling, how the heck do I cook rice to a really advanced cook and how do I chiffonade something? I forgot the technique there. All of these can help there. And I think they're really useful for something that can be a stressful experience for us. And yet food and cooking and sitting around the dinner table and that can be a very communal experience and so, so important in these times to think about communal ways to uh, build community, even if it's just with your family. Okay, uh, next slide. Um, entertainment. So, you know, in these times, right, it's very easy to uh, get a little bored. It's happened to me many, many times. And I think voice assistants are a great way to, hey, I'm bored, I need some quick entertainment, let me do something fun. Um, whether it's really short-lived or a little longer-lived. Talking about longer-lived and really amazing voice games. Um, escape the Room, which is the voice version of an escape room. Um, Gal Shinar wrote this. Really, really um, creative uh, thing. Lots of fun. Frustrating, but fun in the end. That's available on Bixby and Alexa. Um, Feel the Pressure is a quiz. It's on Alexa only, I believe. It's actually my favorite voice quiz game. Really well done with sound effects, lots of fun. The Vortex is a science fiction adventure game, uh, as well as Tempest Rising is on Bixby, another kind of space science fiction adventure game. Um, question of the Day, probably one of the most well-known voice experiences. That's just a fun, if your Question of the Day don't have your question of the day be how many COVID-19 deaths there were the previous day, although many of us may look that up. Hey, go ask question of the day, get a fun question, you get it right, you do a bonus question. Um, I assure you that's a lot more healthy than, than uh, sitting there reading endless, endless articles about COVID and coronavirus. And then finally, I just highlight Akinator, uh, really a 20 question game, lots of fun. We've all played, you know, uh, what is it? rock mineral and i'm forgetting the, how the game the the first question uh goes but uh lots of fun and a great game to play 
and just something entertaining. And I think that's so important right now to uh, find entertainment and fun uh, in the midst of all kinds of so much negative news and negativity uh, in the world. So next slide. So really, that's what I wanted to highlight. You know, I wanted to highlight where I think we can use existing experiences on voice assistance to really help us through this very difficult and challenging time. And I think I highlight, I've highlighted really a fraction of the number that are available. Really, if I had my druthers, I'd have a couple of hundred. That would make a pretty darn boring presentation. But there are many, many out there and I encourage you to go look at it. And then I encourage, I think, the whole community to go take a look and say, hey, what else can be done here? You know, I mentioned one observation that I had that was really strong for the voice community is there's not a lot of voice things targeted toward teens. So go tackle that. Um, but I think all of our voice assistants can help. I think they're going to help us get through this. It's going to be a challenge. They're one part of a much more of a bigger puzzle of how we all stay healthy, both physically and mentally through this. So I want to thank you very much. Um, once again, my name is Roger Kibbe. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Roger Kibbe, and I'm going to actually post this presentation, both to Twitter uh, and LinkedIn after uh, this afternoon. So if you want to go and, and find some of those skills, capsules, or actions, and go try them out yourself, I encourage you to do so. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Roger. Um, it's, it's amazing. I, you know, there's a lot of what you said that I'll, I experience it the, the, the same way right now with uh, with my family, with my kids. We're being at home. We're trying new things. And some of these skills I'm aware of, some of them I'm not aware of. So I'm going to have to uh, definitely try them out with, uh, with, my, uh, with my kids and my family. So thank you very, very much, Roger. Really appreciate your time.